Uh, before we get to Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto space, I do just want to get your take here on some of the broader market volatility that we've been seeing over the past few weeks and months here, and whether there you find opportunity in that, or has that sort of pushed you off, pushed you away to the sidelines? Listen, it's it's a very difficult environment, right? We're at market breaking levels and in, in almost every asset class. And you know, I started Wall Street 30 years ago, and when markets were suffering this much pain, you almost always saw a big knight on a white horse. You know, you could call him Sir Greenspan or Sir Bernanke or you know Madam Yellen, you know, show up with with you know some juice. Uh, that would get the markets excited again. Mm. And this time we don't have central banks that are coming to the aid of markets. And so lots of analogs that one might look at uh, that normally have worked have always worked in the context of a Fed easing cycle, not a, where the Fed still has to, to tighten. And so we're going to be in for a, a rough few months of markets that are pricing a tremendous amount of bearishness, yeah. but a reason to still be bearish. Inflation hasn't rolled over. Uh, growth and employment is still strong in the U.S. We've got a war with China brewing, or at least a, a cold war with China. Uh, China going back to zero COVID and not really helping the global economy and the growth kicker. Uh, you know, yeah. Russia, Russia, Ukraine not really feeling like there's a breaking, you know, in the in the in the tension. And so, it's a lot of bad information. It's priced in, and therefore you're going to see wild bear market rallies. But the Mike. trends kind of remain in place. And Mike, are you ever then tempted amid this volatility to put new money, dry powder to work, whether it be in crypto, whether it be across other assets? Because we spoke to David Rubenstein, for example, just a couple of days ago, saying, look, these levels will eventually go higher if you've got more of a long-term perspective. Now is yeah. not a bad time to be buying. You know, so much is, is, your, is your timing and the context of how you trade, right? If you trade leveraged, the all clear sign's not there yet. It takes a whole lot of courage, and I would encourage people to bet small. Okay. If you're looking at this over a 15-year horizon, I still think stocks haven't hit their low. Uh, but, you know, what are we, 15% maybe uh, from where they finally go, 20%? And so if you're looking at a 10-year horizon, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, two-year notes at 4.5%, at two, mm -hmm. uh, probably a decent buy, even though they could go a little higher. Uh, and so... Again, it's all, it, it all depends on the type of investor you are. When you're thinking about then the role of cryptocurrencies in a broader portfolio, does that base case and that investment opportunity then still stand? Yeah, listen, so crypto is a confusing word because it means a bunch of different things. But if I start with Bitcoin, which has been kind of what I'll call digital gold, uh, an asset that should do well when central banks are debasing their own currency. Uh, it did spectacularly well, right? It went from 10,000 to 70,000 when, you know, post COVID, every central bank was pushing it as much money as humanly possible. It's had a much harder, you know, mm -hmm. uh, year this year, but that makes sense because Chairman Powell has gone from zero rates on the way to four and a half, five percent. Yeah. And so as he's trying to kill inflation, the real question on a go forward basis, because that's all that matters is, Will the central bank be able to kill inflation? And will the yeah. politicians in the US, Democrats and Republicans, be able to stop the urge of all politicians, which is spend more money, right? You see Biden today, you know, doing non-economic things, releasing the SPR yeah. around an election cycle, right? That's, that in general isn't great for markets. Yeah. Uh, California is paying its citizens $1,000 each to try to deal with the inflation. And I understand the, the crises of, how it's hitting working and middle class families. But we either have to stop spending so much money or you're gonna see inflation slowly pick back up after they get it down. And that's that's real the real case for Bitcoin. That okay. populism, populism isn't going away. Mike, what outside of the world of macro though, if anything, starts to get crypto, and I saw talk crypto largely, but let's focus on Bitcoin and ETH out of the bear market. Is there anything nuanced specifically to that? Or is it all about the dollar, about other asset well, classes? For Bitcoin, it's about the macro. But for the rest of crypto, right, the Ethereum ecosystem and all the other, you know, layer one and layer two uh, um, the blockchains being built and what's built on top of them, that's a march, an inevitable march to starting to change how we actually operate. And there's tremendous amount of venture capital that continues to come in the space. Five billion last quarter, nine billion the quarter before that. And if you look at from Citadel to JP Morgan to Bank, the Bank of New York, BlackRock, 
the biggest players in traditional finance are actually making huge investments in and around this architecture. We are going to see tokenization of assets. We are going to see digital money in some form of stable coin. And so that story continues to be really exciting. Uh, I think it's going to need the macro to to catch fire first before other people kind of get in because there's still a correlation. Mm -hmm. But the amount of capacity being built is tremendous. And so when the market comes back, the narrative is, you know, and the narrative is there, there's going to be a lot more access or easier yeah. access to participate. Are you making additional investments in that particular area? You know, we are trying to, you know, manage our our company prudently and build to where the, the puck is going to be. And so we've got a big uh, focus on building a really world-class prime uh, business. Uh, there hasn't been a great prime. The, the market happens so fast. No one really had a chance to build what customers will need in the future. And so we're doing a lot of investment there. We're trying on our asset management side to come up with a more diverse suite of products uh, yeah. for customers. Because we know, I'm, listen, I'm at this conference and a lot of the RIAs haven't made big investments in the space yet, but they're all asking questions and they're all getting ready. And so I think when you see things turn, the digital space, the crypto space is going to be a, a favored child.